Oh, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and we're live on a Sunday afternoon, which means it's time for us to talk about coping with stress. But today, what I really wanted to do is talk about coping with the joy um, and therefore reducing your stress of understanding how far we've come in terms of um, our carbon footprint. And the reason I say that is because yesterday was Earth Day, and I couldn't help but think about how much I have changed in the last 10 years. And maybe you have too. So and what I wanted to do was just go through a list of things. And in your mind, think about how much have you changed the way you do that. And therefore, if you can say, yes, I have, give yourself a big pat on the back and know that you're improving the environment. Hi there. Jeannie's saying hello there. And she's saying hello, everybody. Sal, Jody, rainy day. So she made matzo ball soup and she cut up chicken and uh, angel hair pasta, onions, carrots, mushrooms, thin pieces of asparagus. Wow. Uh, anything else she had left over? Wonderful. It sounds really nutritious and good for you. And so, uh, again, talking about nutrition, uh, I can't help but think about, uh, maybe it's a good time for me to tell you uh, just before we get on to the uh, Earth Day stuff, part of what I've done on Earth Day is, as some of you know, is to grow my own micronutrients. And this was my flat of broccoli micronutrients and microgreens. And as you can see, I finished the first crop and uh, I'm waiting for the second layer to come up. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I now am you know, eating these sort of microgreens all the time whenever I come into the kitchen. This is a, a, a mix of all sorts of alfalfa and all sorts of things. But whenever I come into the kitchen, oh, yeah, you know, I just take a little handful. Very, very good for you. And then um, I've started also... Hmm, these are the same alfalfa type seeds that are growing beautifully, but these are chia, okay? And you can't sit it on those, but on this one, if you look very carefully, you can actually see that my chia seeds have started to sprout. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? I hope you can. So, very exciting for me. <laughs> And so just before we get on to the main subject, uh, let me tell you just a little bit about why I'm growing chia seeds. First of all, I just bought them, you know, in a, a large packet uh, because I put the I put chia in my bread. And um, so I didn't, you know, spend a lot of money buying special seeds or anything. I just literally bought a regular packet of chia seeds and, and sprinkled them, but I've kept them damp all the time. Didn't put earth over them, just put them on a piece of paper and kept them damp. Uh, so just if anybody's thinking of doing it. But the reason I'm doing it is because, as you probably know, chia seeds... Hmm. Let me tell you. All right, they have great nutritional benefits. And if you don't already know that, they're high in omega-3, which is very important, uh, and fiber. And for me... The re reason I'm taking them is because of um, I, I'm on an anti-cancer drug that really depletes a lot of um, my bone mass. All right, and that's one of the things I've got to be aware of. That it, you know, unless I'm very careful, I will lose bone mass because of taking it. So one of the things I found out was that not only a microgreen. Chia seeds, obviously very easy to grow, as I proved this week. But also, I mean, obviously they will grow up much higher. Um, the health benefits of them are amazing. So let me just give you some of the health benefits here. Hold on one second. Um, okay. They're very sl slow to convert into carbs, which is good for us to know. All right. And... So therefore, you know, I also have diabetes, so that's good for me. Um, they're great for my digestion. Um, 
They're great for developing tissue in children and for growth. But what I understood, and I'm trying to find out where I saw that, was that they're high in vitamin C. And also, of course, omega-3. Anyway, so the main thing is, and I can't find that exact thing right now, but the main thing is uh, they're going to be very healthy for me to eat. And if I can grow them in a couple of weeks, that is awesome. Yeah, sprouting chia seeds. Who knew, right? <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting so excited about all this. All right, so let's move on to uh, the birthdays. As far as I know, we don't have any birthdays this week um, from our regular viewers. So if you consider yourself a regular viewer or regular listener, um, because some of you listen to the broadcasts and do other things while you're listening, and others of you, I know, watch the replay. So if you're regular uh, and you consider yourself, you know, one of the dear mama soul peeps, please um, let us know if you had a birthday this week because we have not got it on our database. And the other thing is, if you have any need for thoughts and prayers, please let us know, because uh, we do put them up. And that's why it's a really good idea, if you can, to keep track on Facebook and Twitter. Two things. Whenever we need thoughts and prayers, I will put it up on Facebook. And if I've got to change, um, you know, to a broadcast or something, I try and let you know on there as well. All right, Jody saying foods high in omega-3 fats, such as fatty fish, chia seeds, flaxseed. Ah, flaxseed. Maybe I should try growing flaxseed micronutrients, uh, microgreens, sorry. And walnuts can help protect against bone loss. Thank you, Jody. That's exact. That's why I, I, have, uh, I eat omega-3 eggs, and now I'm eating omega-3 um, microgreens, laden. Omega-3 laden micro, you know, I don't want to get, end up with more bone loss than I need to, for obvious reasons. So thoughts and prayers for anybody who might need them, but can we take one second to give a huge round of applause to Jody? Uh, some of you will know that back in October, Jody got what is called drop foot. That means that she went to walk with one foot, but when she went to walk with the second one, it didn't move. And she ended up falling flat on her face. And then she found out somehow or another, for whatever reason, the connection between her brain and that foot had stopped. So the brain was no longer automatically telling her foot to move when it should. If you think about it, you don't think about walking, do you? You just walk. And the reason you do that is because your brain knows once you've used this foot, then it's time to use the next foot, you know, and it, it, you don't even think about it, right? It just happens. It's like blinking blinking obvious isn't it so um so somewhere or another that connection to tell that foot to move was lost and jody's been struggling with that ever since october and she also is smart enough to know if she doesn't use that foot she's going to lose you know the, the muscles will atrophy and she won't be able to use it ever so what she did was even though it didn't appear to be doing any good she continued to, to, you know, get physio for it. And she continued to, you know, try and use her elliptical machine. Your elliptical is automatic, right? You can put it on um, that it automatically goes. So it forces your foot to move. Am I correct in that, Jody? You know, mine, you have to put pressure on it. But I think you've got an electrical one that um, does it whether you want to or not. Let me know if that's correct. Anyway, but the really good news is that... Um, Friday, I think it was, Jody told me that she was able to move her foot a couple of inches. Yep, Jody's saying that she that her her particular elliptical, and it's one of that you can sit down and do. Like I've got um, one of those under desk bikes. I love it for bit, you know, when I go, when I just the first thing I do when I turn on the television and I know I'm in binge watching mode, I will go and sit at Billy the bike. And it's, you know, he's about this big. And I just, for the first half hour, I just pedal. And I know from experience that's 3,000 steps, and I'm using all the muscles in my legs, which are the first ones to go. So really important for me. So, Jody, I am so proud of you, and I know how much work you must have done to start getting those connections to reconnect. And 
I would think, I don't know enough about the neurology of this, but I would think once you have got that connection starting again, it probably will come back fairly quickly. Um, I'm pretty certain your, your health people will be able to let us know more about that. But I would think once that highway has been rebuilt, even to a small amount, now it's a case of strengthening the muscles and everything else again. Um, very exciting. So well done. And I know how much work you did to get there. Now, I also must admit that I have um, had progress this week. Some of you know I've been doing dumbbells. <laughs> Dumb people use dumbbells. Uh, I've been using dumbbells. And I've started off by using two-pound dumbbells, one, uh, two pounds in each side. Actually, I, I lie. I did have one-pound ones that I had originally way back. But now I'm, then I bought the two pound ones and I realized that I was getting strong enough that I've actually loaded them up another half a pound this yesterday. So I'm now two and a half pounds um, and I'll see how I do with that. So it's very exciting. And to my absolute amazement, I did 48, nearly 48 and a half thousand steps this week, which means that I averaged 6.9 thousand steps a day. And that means that I am getting stronger. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, I went through a mastectomy in November and I've been fighting to rebuild my strength and you know get all my muscles working again because you'll be amazed how that messes with all your muscles as well. So never mind the psychological side of that and you know all the other things that go with it. So I'm really, really delighted to be able to say that I've got enough of my mind back and my strength back to be able to do close to 7,000 steps a day. And I'm obviously working my way back up now to 8,000. That will be the next goal. And uh, then I will be you know, almost back to where I was before the operation, which is awesome. I'm really, really happy. And it doesn't come easily, as I know. And that's why I know what Jody must have done to get that connection back again. But it does come if you refuse to quit on yourself. And I am pretty sure, you know, I now know, oh, if it's time to binge watch, then let me start by sitting on Billy the Bike and doing half an hour. I, because I know half an hour on there is 3,000 steps. And I'm now, my, my other thing is if I want to build up my strength uh, during the day, I know not to sit down. Quite simple. You know, if I stay standing to do things, I will put on twice as many steps as if I sit down. But I also know that I need to sit down every now and then just to pace myself because I get tired. And that's OK. So let's move on. Here we go. I'm going to go through all sorts of different ways that we can lower our carbon footprint. And what I would like you to do, those of you who are in the room, is give me some feedback on how well you've done sort of this year and if you you know if you've made any improvement on it this year and if not you know how much have you done in the last 10 years and uh, just so we can just remember how far we've come because i think what happens with this whole uh, carbon footprint thing is we forget how far we've come so when i realized when i arrived in this house one of the things that shocked me was the size of my garbage can because it was about this, you know, my the one that the they, you go take to the side of the road, it was about it's about this big by about this big, which was about a third of the size of the one I was used to. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they only collected every other week. And I'm going, how will I ever cope with it? But what I learned to do was to ration the stuff that I put in there, right? So I got really clever about anything that didn't have to go in there, didn't. And then I just filled it up with the other junk. And I, I hoarded a lot of stuff when I first moved here until I had room in my car, um, bin to remove it. And then I've got an organic bin, which is even smaller, but they collect that every week. That's great. However, I, I very rarely have more than about this much in it. Um, which tells me I'm not wasting as much food as I was. So we have recycling here. I don't know about where you are. Do you have recycling uh, at the road on a regular basis? And what can you recycle? 
you know, that's the interesting thing. We've, we can recycle in different containers. We have what we call a gray bin, which takes glass, you know, jars and things like that. You, you can't put broken glass in there. Um, we have regular recycling where we can put in cardboard. Uh, we have cardboard as a separate container, uh, a yellow bag for cardboard. But then we have the blue bin will take, you know, other cards, packaging and stuff. Um, and all the other use, you know, tin cans and things like that. Uh, and plastic containers. Now, the good news is my recycling depot takes a whole lot more than that. All right. But you've got to go and take it there. And one of the things it started to do this year was to do the one single use plastics. And that would be the stuff that they wrap your food in. You know what I mean? When you buy maybe broccoli or something and it's in a little black container with single use plastic over the top of it. But it also does. Um, hmm. Oh, I've, unfortunately, I've taken it away. But you know, the sort of the sort of plastic that you would get frozen fruit in and put in your freezer it takes all of that as well. I have collected a leaf bag full in just a couple of months. I'm so excited, and that's how much is now not going into the landfill. It's it's going to be whatever they're doing with it now, and I don't know what it is, but very excited. So. What I realized was I actually was quite surprised how much I have changed because I've been here two years. I quite honestly could do with my garbage only being collected once a month now. <laughs> now that I got rid of that single-use plastic. And um, as I said, I do put my organics out, but I actually only put it out every two weeks because it's, it's more effort than it's worth to take it down every week because there's so little in it. Plus... You know, I do have a composter myself. So, you know, if I've only got a little bit, I just throw it in my own compost. So here are my questions for you. Are you ready? Number one, how many of you have changed to or are increasing your use of LED lights as opposed to the regular ones? And, you know, originally we went from regular ones, incandescent ones, to the whirly gigs. But now we're moving away from those straight into LEDs. And the reason is they use 75% less energy and last 25% longer. So obviously I've got LEDs here next to my computer. And that is why. <laughs> you just get a better picture of me when, when the LEDs are on, right? I wish I hadn't done that. I can do this. Okay. So <laughs> um, I have LEDs here. I have LEDs uh, to my left here with some of my seedlings because I use them for growing my seedlings. All right. So Jeannie's saying she has two bins, one for paper and cardboard and the like, and the other is for leftover foods, plastics, and other. Oh. Oh, interesting. And then we have to buy trash sticker for the bag of for things that go to the dump oh so to go to the dump you have to pay to send things to the dump is that right we have to buy a trash sticker ah okay so jody really recommend leds that new light i put in in my bedroom totally led um these lights are a type of LED. I haven't got uh, the, they're, they're not the regular ones, but I'm now bit by bit, and they make them s s screw in ones, but they are LED. They're a little bit more expensive to buy, but please know that they use 75% less energy, which means you will they will pay for themselves, and they will last you 25% longer than a regular bulb. All right. So there you go. So if you haven't thought about it, think about it. Jeannie, do you have any LED bulbs in your house? 
And anybody else who might be in the background watching, I'd really like to know if any of you are using LEDs. I'm actually amazed. I have now, even my bedside lights are LED now. My my light uh, on my coffee table is LED now. My light in my confetti corner is LED. So I've almost got everything LED. Um you know, you all saw that when I put new bathroom lights in, I put in LEDs. Yeah. So Jeannie's saying, yes, York bought them and used them. Yes, good. So let's give yourself a bonus point for that. How many of you have your heating and cooling on a thermostat? In other words, it automatically does what it needs to do. And if you do, great. And here's another thought. I've been reading that if you change either your cooling or your heating by two degrees, in other words, in the winter, turn the thermostat down two degrees, and in the summer, allow it to go up two more degrees before the cooling kicks in. If you do that, you will um, reduce your energy consumption by three to five percent all right so basically what it means is in the winter you know put on an extra you know put on a cardigan or put a throw rug over your legs rather than put up the the, the heat in the summer all right wear layers that you can you know take off as it gets hotter and, and do everything you can. Um, you know, if, you, if your air can... What, what temperature do you set your cooling at? That would be an interesting thing. I've got somewhere here later on, it tells you what they recommend. So let, let's, we'll do that in a second. The other thing I would like to recommend, uh, some of you know this, that I ended up having my furnace blow this year. And I decided not to replace it. Even though I thought I probably should, I decided not to. I wanted to live a year without my furnace to see what the difference was. And what I've noticed now is that I actually am heating my house totally differently. I am he heating the front two thirds of my house with my fireplace. And basically I heat my living room dining my living room and, and front door area. Uh, pretty high, and that heat then trans, you know, moves its way around into here in the kitchen, and then halfway in, into the rest of the house. And then I heat my bedroom with an oil-fired heater uh, on a thermostat. All right, so it's set at a certain temperature. And in my bathroom, I have one of those small little ceramic heaters that does an awesome job of keeping my bathroom at a certain temperature. And I've noticed to my surprise, obviously a change in the amount of um, energy I'm using with a furnace because I'm not using a furnace anymore, but I'm surprised that I really haven't increased my electrical usage way and above where the furnace would have taken it. So in a way, I'm actually saving money. I've also learned to heat the area I am in, not the whole house. And so I don't know if any of you have seen them. You can now buy really small ceramic heaters that you just plug into a socket, and it will just heat the area you're in, not the whole house. I mean, it'll permeate some of the other. But it's a really good idea because when you're in that area, you can turn it on. And when you leave that area, you can turn it off. So if you want to make a dramatic change in the cost of your heating, you might want to think about that. I also have those small little um, air coolers for the same reason. All right. I have a, I, I did buy an um, air conditioner, a mobile one. Uh, for my living room because it went up to almost 100 degrees in there. Um, so I know I need air conditioning in that room. And But I got one, but I only set it to kick in at a, about 80 degrees. Where do you set your air conditioner at is what I want to know. So my um, 
my living room has to get over 80 degrees before that um, air conditioner comes in. Now, obviously, <laughs> we haven't had any need for it yet. <laughs> but my tulips came up. I'm very happy. So definitely we're into spring now. <laughs> All right. So Jody's saying, uh, I had our little ceramic heater running in the bathroom today. It works like a charm. Yes, it's really good in a bathroom. And it'll heat up a bathroom in no time. All right. Now, here's the next one. Do you recycle junk mail? And things like single-use plastics and light bulbs and batteries. So what I want to know is over and above what I call the obvious things, do you take that trip? once every couple of months to a recycle depot and, and, and recycle the rest of it. If not, think about that. Now this one, ah, okay, so Jody's saying, I operate our air conditioner manually, daily, because it's beside my chair. It's a portable window unit. Yes, that's what I've got as well. Um, but what I do is I have it on during the day um, because it heats up very quickly, and then I turn it off at night. I mean, don't turn it off, actually, now that I think about it, because it's set high enough that it automatically turns off as the sun goes down. Um, you know, it, as soon as the temperature inside the house drops below 80, it obviously turns itself off. And I didn't find a great increase in the use of hydro uh, electricity last year from using that portable. I was quite surprised. It actually was far more economical than I than I thought it would be. So I'm happy for that. So Jody, mine mine is a portable on on wheels, you know, so I can move it around if I want to. Very happy with it. Right, this one I wasn't good at. I still am inclined to run my faucet while I clean my teeth. I know from being a camper that it is quite possible to clean your teeth just by putting a little bit of water in a plastic container or a, a mug or a glass, whatever, um, but just putting some water in there and just each time dipping your toothbrush into that water. And, you know, you can clean your teeth with that. What amazed me was if you do that, instead of letting the faucet run, you will save four gallons of water each time. That is surprising. That's enough for me to make me want to do it. But it said, if you're a family of four, you would save 200 gallons of water a week. Think about how many jugs that would be. To me, that was pretty interesting. Now, how many of you, you know, turn the shower on and walk away because you need to have time for the hot water to get to your shower. And the reason I ask that is I have to do that. You know, <laughs> mine is well water. That well water comes out of the ground uh, almost as cold as the water in my fridge. It's amazing. Uh, you know, if I, if I run my faucet here, um, it'll start off fairly warm because that's the water in the pipes. But once I start getting that water that's being pulled out of the um, ground, it is really cold for a while. And so when I want to have, yeah, Jody's saying the same. It comes out as cold as ice cubes. Yep. So I was, you know, I wasn't used to that because I had, you know, city water before. But boy, you certainly know when it comes out of the ground. Um. So. What they're saying, and listen to this, think about it. You don't have to do it, but I want you to start thinking about it because once we start thinking about it, we make changes. Jeannie's saying, I turn on the shower, wait about a minute, and then get into it. Okay, here's what it's suggesting, Jeannie, is while that is running, stick a bucket under it. All right, have a bucket and stick it under there. Because... You could use that water in a very constructive way. You could use it to flush the toilet next time and not have to flush extra water. You could use that bucket of water to obviously do plants and things, but I'm thinking in the winter that would be useless. But it would be interesting, I, you know, depending on how many times a week you shower, 
I'm not going to ask you that embarrassing question. But if you think about it, how many times would you not have to flush if you put a bucket under the shower when you're warm, getting to warm water? I'm thinking about having a collapsible bucket in my shower for that reason. So how many of you going? Actually, that's a good point. All right. So to me, it's like, that would be saving quite a bit of water. Now, some of you do compost and some of you don't. Now, if you, uh, you know, live in a house, the chances of you doing compost are probably greater than if you don't. But they are making compost machines now. In other words, you basically put the compost in and press a button. And what it does is it fries the, the whatever you've put into there and then grinds it up into earth. So that's not a bad idea, but I thought about that and I thought, well, I know that um, I, I don't have a, a, a garburator here. What do you call that in America? The thing that churns up food in your sink. <laughs> but then I went, yes, I do. It's called a ninja. And so part of me goes, um, it is a garbage disposal. Okay, a garbage disposal. Thanks. But here's the thing. If you buy a second-hand um, food blender, you could create your own garbage disposal. <laughs> right? Uh, and I quite often just, um, you know, nuke mine all up in my blender and then take it outside and, and pour it over my plants. Think about that. And I, I'm quite uh, in the summer, I will do that, and I will walk out and I will dig a hole in my in my vegetable garden and just pour it in and cover it up. I obviously don't have meats and stuff in there. I just you know put vegetable you know leftover vegetables and stuff like that. So to me, it's just like not a bad idea. You can be a composter, and I'm not quite sure if I I don't think I would do that if I lived in an apartment, I'm trying to think about that. Okay. So Jeannie's saying, York, that's her husband who died, unfortunately, saying York always used a trash compactor when, uh, which is in the garage, right? I don't really need it for one person. Yeah, but, you know, that, that helps lower the amount that you use. Okay, here's a question. When did you last plant a tree? And I thought that was a great question. And I am pleased to tell you last year. <laughs> I actually go through my um, I go through my place every year to see what nature has started. And uh, I have now got four I found I must have found two each year. Um I've I've now got four fir trees growing in buckets on the, you know, as, as a, a bit of a, a barrier between myself and the neighbor. But I've grown them from just little seedlings that started to come up in the ground that normally, you know, would have been, um, you know, killed with weed killer and stuff. Yes, Ginny's saying I planted trees last year to replace the ones we lost. So think about that. Just, uh, you know, adding one more tree to the environment will help. How many of you go out of your way to buy locally grown and produced foods? And do you know why that's a good idea? They taste different. There's no doubt about that. If you've got a local you know, farmer's market that you know, pops up at the weekends or something, um, it's a really good idea. However, other than the, the fact the taste is so much better, um, there's another reason. You definitely help the environment. And the reason for that is you're not buying grapes that have been trucked all the way from Mexico or Chile. All right. And if you think about it, if we can grow more locally, and that's why I'm doing more and more to grow my own stuff, grow more locally and 
I don't mind if I grow too much because I will give it away to my neighbors and help them not have to buy as much. Yeah, and as Judy is saying, not only is it about good taste and not only is it about saving that money, but it also helps, you know, promote local businesses. And I, I that's a, you know, another one. And Jeannie's saying, I love local eggs. Yeah. So I can remember every almost every time I went to go and visit Benji and Judy. Yeah, Benji and I would go on a trip to go collect eggs and milk from the local farmer. And the reason we would is because we could chit-chat on, on stuff on the way there and on the way back and not get interrupted. Have any of you changed the way you use your car? And I want to tell you, that's probably the biggest shock to me since I retired. Uh, I have been able to not use my car. I probably use my car once every 10 days. And that is a, a huge difference. Now, I've got to admit that my car is still a gas guzzler. guzzler. You know, I've got a, a V8 Jeep. But you understand, I don't use it every day. And I am absolutely shocked at <laughs> how little I use it now. And I realized yesterday in a discussion that next year I will need to renew my driving license. And there's part of me that needs to do the math on how much it is costing me to keep my car and whether actually, if, you know, I would love a community like the one I'm in that's got over 100 units in it um, to have what I call communal cars, you know, electric ones. I, I you know, I, I know it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but, you know, I can see that happening. All right. Well, you won't need to buy a car um, because the community will have a series of cars, you know, maybe your your. Um, your apartment block or whatever will have a series of cars that are available. Yeah, Jeannie's saying she uses her car frequently. So now, obviously, if you're a very social person or you know, maybe you do a lot of volunteering or whatever, um, yes, and you know, for those of our viewers that go to work, that's a no-brainer. I understand that. But think about how you could use it less. And one of the things that I do now is I think, oh, I really need to go to the store and buy so-and-so. And I go, okay, I'll do that on Tuesday. Because I have Tuesdays in my head as the day that I will use the car. Now, quite often I don't even do it then. I'll do it the following Tuesday. But I, what I do is I sort of bank up the things that need me to get in my car and, and do it all in one go. You know, I'll go to the re recycling depot. I will go pick up certain things that I haven't been able to get from my supplies or whatever. And, you know, it's just it's just the day I do things like that. The other thing is I found that having the local stores delivered to me uses their gas. I know I pay for it in a different way, but the, what they most of those stores are using electric cars, uh, delivery vans, all right? So... To me, and I pay, what, I pay five bucks on the cost of my groceries to have that delivery done. And I want to tell you, it would cost me more than that. Um, it would cost me more than that in my car. Other than my time is valuable and da-da-da-da, you know, all that sort of thing. Next one. How many of you... Heat, you know, have a dishwasher, first of all. That's nice if you've got one. Have a dishwasher and dry the stuff in it by electricity. All right? As opposed to let the dishwasher do the washing, but once it's done, open the door and let the air, let it air dry. And if you don't do that, consider it. I'm not saying you have to. What I'm saying is consider it. Um, I have a system where I only turn my dishwasher on very last thing before I go to bed. And the reason to that, for that is because I go to bed early in the, you know, after midnight. And the cost of electricity after midnight is far less. And so 
I turn mine on as I go to bed. And then when I get up in the morning, when I make my coffee, I open it up. And it's already been drip drying in there overnight. But once I open it up, the air gets in there and that dries the rest of it uh, while I'm drinking my coffee. All right. So by the time I've done that, you know, the stuff in there is dry. And occasionally I'll take something out and I'll just put it on here to finish drying. Uh, but I know I've saved a lot of electricity that way. The other thing is, it's summer coming for most of us, not obviously those of our viewers that are in Australia and New Zealand and stuff. But, you know, I'm thinking it's summer. And how many of you dry your clothes outside in the summer? Is there a nicer feeling than sheets that have dried in, um, in the air, you know? crisp sheets now you're saying yeah but then you've got to iron them to soften them up again i'm going what if you dried them there and then huck them in the dryer for maybe 10 minutes just to soften them as opposed to an hour that's my thinking now i'm in a community where you can't put washing out but i certainly could put washing on a on a clothes horse haven't i i, I haven't done it but it's something I'm going to think about. And part of my reason for thinking of this is because it gets pretty darn warm in my laundry room um, in the summer. And I can remember going to Europe uh, on a vacation, and I was amazed that most of the German houses, I was in Germany at the time, most of the German houses I visited didn't have uh, dryers. What they had was a laundry room with a rack that went, you know, you, you loaded up this, your stuff uh, on the drying rack and then you pulled it up and it stayed up in the ceiling um, because heat rises and, you know, it all air dried. I can remember that. Can any of you remember when that was the way we dried clothes? I can. But I'm thinking about if you're trying to save money and you have the ability to put things on a clothes horse rather than use a dryer, you might want to think about that. But it may mean that you need to just iron some stuff. So think about maybe, you know, think about, you know, what is it worth to you to spend the money or not? Or what about, as I said, half and half, you know, just put it on there, let it basically dry and then huck it in for the last 10 minutes just to soften it up. That's probably the way I would do it. Uh, I want to go back to dishwasher because I'm pretty certain that that psychologically a lot of you will feel that running your dishwasher is an expense you don't need and therefore do hand washing instead. But I do need to tell you from what I've been able to see, uh, unless somebody has found a different bit of research, you actually use far less water and energy for some reason, far less water anyway, um, by by putting things in the dishwasher. But just make sure your dishwasher is pretty full before you run it. You know, don't run it with a couple of plates in it, obviously. And so sometimes if I don't have very much, I will just rinse it and put it aside and then put it in the dishwasher and for the next day, the following day. Now, this is something, the next thing I want to talk about is something that I did and I don't know what started me on it. But one day I bought a, a strip light like this that is a, a motion detector light at night. Let me see if I can get this one to work. Ah, this one's dead. Oh, there we go. Okay. So what happens is if, if it... Um, okay, that's now a motion detector. So if it gets dark... Can I make it go dark? <laughs> anyway, what happens is if it goes dark, uh, it will turn on if it if there's a motion, all right? So I can be in bed, I can go all the way to my kitchen and not have to turn on a light because I've got a couple of these on the way to the kitchen. So as I get, um, and I have it facing, so as I get probably 10 feet away from it, it will light up. And then as I get 10 feet away the other side, it will turn itself off. 
And I have those uh, so I don't have to put on a light to go to the bathroom. I've, you know, I've got one that comes on automatically. I don't have to put on a light to go into the living room because I've got one in there. If I remember, I've left something in the living room. I don't have to turn on a light. Uh, I've got these, a couple of these that will automatically come on. So I would suggest, and by the way, these um, I can recharge um, you know, just off my computer or anything else. You know, they just recharge with a, a, a cable. The same cable I use to recharge my laptop. I also have them outside. So, you know, uh, my steps, so that if anybody gets anywhere near my steps, these things will just click on. And so you can see where the steps are and it'll be safe. I have them so that when I go out at night to go, to put something into the garbage, right? They will light up. I don't have to turn on a light. They automatically light up. So think about doing that. And I've had mine for the longest time, years. Um, and they're LED again. So we know they use very little energy. So think about that. Now, something that I mentioned the other day, um, and funny enough, it came up as well. Uh, if I print something and for some reason don't need it, and I have got clean paper on the other side, I keep that piece of paper. Or if something comes into my house that is only printed on one side, okay, printed on one side, not the other, I keep this. And I use that paper in my printer for anything that is what I call everyday stuff. Maybe I want to print a recipe. Maybe I want to print out some accounts or something. And I will just literally put a line through the other side and print the new thing on this side. I cannot tell you how much paper I have saved by doing that. I am busy um, going through a lot of old accounts. And what I'm doing is if the second side is clear, I'm keeping a box of paper that is only used on one side. So think about that. The other thing is, if you are using a printer, are you recycling the print cartridges? You know, not throwing them away, sending them back to the manufacturer. Um, I don't know what print cartridges you use, but I, I have HP printers. And I'm on a what they call a, a, a program where they automatically detect how much ink my computers and um, my printers have used and they then automatically send me more ink the price of that is about depending how many pages you print a month is anywhere from five to 15 bucks a month i don't know how much you spend for printer cartridges but i used to pay something like 45 bucks just for a printer cartridge so I decided I was going to, um, you know, sign on to this program and to see I will never go back to buying regular printer cartridges. Plus, they send you a little baggie that you can send the old cartridges back to them so they can reuse them. Yeah, Jody's saying it's an amazing deal. We have that service too. Yeah, so look into that. It, not only does it help the environment because the printer cartridges go back to the to the um, print man uh, printer manufacturer, but also know that you're going to save a whole lot of money. I'm, I'm amazed how much money I saved, and thank Yvonne for letting me know about that. Another question that I have for you. When did you last pull out your fridge and clean the coils? I know mine was about two years ago because <laughs> it was done when, when we had the fire. So, so Jeannie's will have, Jeannie had a brand new fridge two years ago. So, um, yeah, so mine's probably due and Jeannie's saying never. Do you know that if you clean the coils of your fr fridge, it will uh, work a lot better and save you money? So it's recommended that, you know, at least every year you pull it out and just, you know, uh, one of two things, um, you know, either take a, 
a, a hand broom, your hand brush, you know, and just clean the coils or take a vacuum and vacuum it out. You'll be amazed how much comes off there. How many of you use a hose pipe to clean your driveway if you have one? I was horrified to see that cleaning your driveway with your hose rather than a broom uses 150 gallons of water. So try not to use the water too much. I was amazed in my community how many people were using their hoses and, you know, wastefully in my view. And I said, aren't we on a well? And they said, yeah, that's the whole thing. You know, it doesn't. And I'm going, yeah, anyway. Back to the shower. Regardless of how long you stand in your shower and try and stay there as little as possible would be the thing. Reducing the time by two minutes would save you 700 gallons a month. 700 gallons. Now, I don't spend a whole lot of time. Actually, I need to, I, I basically spend as much time as it takes to wash my hair. <laughs> um, and one of the things I know that when I was a happy camper, I had a bathtub in my uh, trailer. But what I used to do was not sit in the bathtub. I used to stand in the tub. And I loved it because you had extra room. You know, most, most um showers in a trailer are very small but you know i had a whole bathtub uh not a full length one but a like a i would think about a four foot one length so you could get into the bathtub ideal for you know children and stuff so you could be able to get in there with a bucket of water one bucket of water where and then i would first of all wet my hair and my body then I would shampoo my hair, use, this, use the soap from the shampoo to wash my body and rinse everything off. And then, you know, I like to rinse, wash my hair twice. That's what it takes. Do my hair a second time, rinse it off, and I still would have water in the bucket. So we don't need to stand in there for a long, long time. And if you don't believe it's possible, try it. One bucket of water is all you really need. Um, in terms of saving money, I will say that you know, when I was thinking about the wash type area, I was thinking I've really reduced how much detergent I use. Because what I found out was how much detergent your clothes retain. And... The other thing is the more soap you're using, and obviously they want you to use the amount that they tell you because that uses up their product quickly. But what I discovered was the amount of detergent that clothes hold onto is mind-blowing, even when you've rinsed it in, the, in, in your washer. And if you don't believe me, try a black wash, for example, and don't put any soap powder in there and you will find your clothes are perfectly clean and if you really want to give yourself a fright take some of your whites and soak them in a bathtub for a day and see the color of the water the water will be brown and uh, you know very pale brown but the reason for that is because of the detergent that is still in your clothes so what I now do, how many of you have seen those ads where they're now making little strips of detergent on, on like paper and you just throw that in? And you probably think that would never clean my clothes, but you know something? They're right. You don't need a cup of detergent powder in your wash. The other thing I do so that I use far less um, detergent is... Anything that needs to be white, you know, that, that, that's likely to be difficult to wash and needs to be white, I soak it. I have a, a, a bucket in my laundry room and I will put in about a quarter of a cup of detergent and, and mix it all up. 
and then what I do is I just throw my face cloths uh, and you know anything that needs to be white white I will throw in there while I'm waiting to do a white wash now the bigger white things the towels and things they just go in the laundry basket but the smaller stuff socks white socks would go in there you know what I mean anything that needs to to do that and You'll be amazed. I can, and then when it's wash day for the whites, I pour the whole bucket, including that quarter of a cup of dish um, of washing powder, into my washer, and that's what I use for my white wash, quarter of a cup, and it's already cleaned uh, most of the whites. And then what's the, the what's left in in powerful wise does the rest of my wash. I have reduced the amount of washing powder I use dramatically. How many of you use cold water in your washing machines rather than hot? Even for whites. You know, the technology today, the, 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 the washing powders today, are made to be able to clean whites um, you know, in cold water. So why spend the money to use hot? You all know because you've watched me over the years. Uh, I don't think you have ever seen me use my big oven, although I cook for you every week. Right? I don't think you've ever seen me open up. You're probably wondering, is it real? Yeah, <laughs> and it is. But the thing is, I cook for myself and I cook in there. Now, I understand that I am a single person, so cooking in there is really easy for me. But I found it interesting because I actually convinced Doug not to use his big oven, but to get himself, he, he's got the drawer type um, air fryer. And it didn't take him very long to go, I love the air fryer, but it's not big enough. You know, I can't cook everything at the same time you know, because of the size of it. So instead of using his oven, he now has three different air fryers and they use less electricity than his oven. Interesting, right? He uses one for meat, you know, one to do the vegetables and one to do whatever. And it's amazing to watch him. Some of you have got, um, I think it's called a hot pot, all right, uh, which is a pressure cooker. And again, cooks far more quickly and is far less energy than turning on an oven. So if you can, do that. I believe that they will build, you know, houses soon without an oven in it. All right, we'll probably have a stove top and a couple of small things like that. Think about the last few years. Hang on a second. What's Jeannie saying here? She bought a Ninja air fryer and it was not and was not good at using it. So I'm back to using my microwave. Ah, is your microwave a convection microwave? It cooks as well as um, the, you know, it's it's a it's an oven as well as a microwave because they make those convection ones that are both right. Yeah, I want to tell you, I had a lot of problems. You will remember, I, I I had a lot of problems until I got got an air fryer that worked for me. Right, that you can get a microwave that is convection, so you might look into that if it, you know just for for a thought. The other thing is, Jeannie, get yourself because now you're cooking for yourself. Get yourself. Um, uh, what do they call it, um, a toaster oven that will take uh, a full casserole dish. I, you know, I still have mine here under under the computer. I still have mine here because <laughs> it's very useful to put things on when I'm doing broadcast. Um, but really, that's what, that is what an air fryer is. And mine has full convection so I could bake in it and everything else, you know. Um, so... You know, don't worry about an air fryer. Maybe you don't like that stuff. Just just get yourself a good quality, um, good size.
toaster oven. And mine would take a full dinner plate and a full casserole dish. I used it. I, I think I paid 125 bucks for it many, 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 many years ago, probably 20 years ago, and it's still going. It's a rotisserie. Oh, and, and it had a rotisserie in it as well. It was the baby of this. You know, before we got these, we had this, and I still use it. Yeah, if I if I don't want to use my big oven, I will use this and my other one. So the next thing, how many of you have noticed a change in what you use to clean your house? How many of you are using less toxic cleaners? How many of you have gone back to the more basic cleaning system? And really, to me, that was, you know, I try to think, you know, I do, I do buy some toxic ones, I guess, but very few. Um, but if you can, you know, think about not using the highly toxic stuff. Use the organic ones if you possibly can, and if you can afford to, of course. The next thing... Yeah, Jeannie's saying, I try to use less toxic cleaners and everything smells better. Yes. You can always add a nice smell to it as well. Easy to do. Uh, how many of you have stopped buying your water in small water bottles? You know, it was big fad for a long time. Um, if I go out, I take this water bottle with me, right? Because I can hold it with my pinky finger while I'm walking, no problem. You know, uh, or it'll fit into my um, purse when I'm shopping. And it has its own straw. Don't have to, not using throwing away straws all the time. So please don't buy your water in bottles. I have a zero filter water filter here that filters all my water. And I change the filter on that probably every six months. Right, here's the next one. This one is a really big change in my life. I must have started it five years ago, I would think. Um, but if you ever have a reason to use panty liners, um, consider buying washable ones if you haven't already got them. I did the experiment, as I said, about five years ago. I thought I would just, I went, okay, for 20 bucks, let me try them. I immediately bought another set. I'm not joking. Within a month, I, I had bought my second set. And I now have enough washable panty liners to keep me going, you know, all week without running out. And I just also have the ability now to you know to change them two or three times a day if I want to you know it, it, it's just like it's amazing and I'm going how did I ever buy panty liners before and how many ended up in the landfill so if you haven't tried them I really recommend that you do you know, bite the bullet and buy one set and see what a difference it makes in your life. And I'm pretty sure you will be surprised how quickly you're going, I need a second set. And I literally, I'm not joking, I wash mine obviously all the time. And I've had mine for five years. I think I've had mine for five years. Never, you know, once I bought the, the two sets, no, I bought three sets. Now that I think about it, but I've never bought any more and they haven't, you know, they, they were really well made and they haven't disintegrated and I still wear them and wash them every day. So think about that. Um, another one that I'm sure that a lot of you now understand, I very, you very rarely see me use paper towels, right? I have. Uh, 
I have a bunch of dark face, well, these are blue ones, of dark face cloths that I use instead of paper towels. And as you wash them, you can tell this one's obviously very old. <laughs> but, you know, as you wash them, they get paler and more and more pale. But I use these every week and they get washed. I would think each one probably gets washed twice a week. Right. The other thing, it's really nice. You know, you can use it and then throw it into the sink, you know, just to rinse it off and then squeeze it out and use it again. But I'm not joking. I, I use, I've used these. Oh gosh, how long have I had these? Uh, I've probably been using this method for 20 years, I would think. And I cannot remember the last time I bought blue face cloths. So give that some thought if you want to save money on paper towels. I saw a comment when I was researching this this week where it actually said there is a movement towards moving away from you know, sort of Kleenex-type tissues, face-based tissues, and going back to handkerchiefs. I don't think we will somehow. Uh, you know, it would really, I understand that environmentally it would be better. But I think that I don't think that will be something we go back to in a hurry. For those of you who have property and you have a house, do you use rain barrels? Um, that you know, I, I have a rain barrel, and I'm amazed um, how much you know I can use that rain barrel to water my plants or do whatever. And and it's very useful for me, as you know, because I'm on a well here. If we lose electricity. We also lose water, and so in the summer, if you know if that happens, I can actually go to my rain barrel and water my plants. You know they don't they don't die. Another thought, and this is just you know, don't freak out on it. But how often do you flush the toilet? I, I can remember going to one house many years ago, and it was on a well, a, a septic system. And it had a little notice on there that I always remember. And it said, you know, if it's yellow, let it mellow. And if it's brown, flush it down. And I thought about that. And I thought, you know, that's interesting. I understand psychologically why if it's brown, you should flush it down. And I thought, you know, yeah, if it's yellow, let it mellow. And what I, I never flush my toilet at night. Yeah, you know, if I get up three or four times in the night, I will not flush my toilet. And I, to me, you don't need to, right? Because you just, you know, by the time I get up in the morning and pee, and then I flush. And think about uh, for those of us who 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 um, need to go to the washroom pretty regularly. Think about how much water you would save if if it's yellow, let it mellow. Think about that. Uh, this is a thing I'm pretty sure that everybody does nowadays. But if you buy beer or your um, pop in six packs, where they, you know, got those rings around them, those plastic ones, I, I please do not put those into anything without snipping all those circles. All right, because you have no idea how many fish get caught on those things. But those of you who have a washing machine, how often do you clean the lint filter in your washing machine? Do you do it every cycle? Do you do it a couple of times a week? Do you do it once a month? How often do you clean the lint filter in your washing machine? And the research that I saw was the more often you clean it, um, the more efficient your dryer will be. Did you know that? And my next question to you is, what do you do with the lint? All right, so Jeannie's saying she, she cleans hers frequently. But frequently is very subjective. So what would frequently look like for you? Would it be a couple of times a week? Would it be...
every do, do you do it every time you use your dryer oh jody's saying that they, they check their lint trap every wash okay and jo and Jeannie's saying every other time uh, i just want to get something and show you I've been saving my lint. And the reason is because we have a really big slug and bug problem here. And so this year, when I plant my seedlings, I am going to put a little circle of lint around them because slugs hate that texture. And I reckon that, you know, it'll blend in pretty well with the, with the soil and also as the seedlings grow up, um, this will obviously, all this is is hair and, and paper and stuff, you know, whatever it's called, um, but this will biodegrade and become earth as well. I am very excited to do that. And I'm gonna start doing that next week. It's getting warmer now. Next question, how often do you wash your sheets? And when you think about how much water it takes to wash sheets, a couple of things I've been thinking about. Number one, I remember I was at boarding school. Okay. And we used to have sheet, you know, your sheets stayed on the bed for two weeks and then you top and tailed them. In other words, whatever was the top of the sheet went to the bottom of the bed for the next two weeks. Um, so we only, when I think about it, we only changed our sheets at boarding school every month. We changed the direction of them every two weeks. So how often do you clean your sheets? And do you actually need to wash them every week if you do them every week, right? Uh, and if you do them every other week, do you need to wash them? If what I'm saying is, what if you wet... Um, you know, a, a couple of face cloths or whatever, and throw them in the dryer and let them steam. I, you know, my, my sheets don't get dirty, right? What you're doing is refreshing them. So if, you know, I've got a, a, a dryer that actually has a, a refresher cycle on it, which will actually blow steam onto the stuff and kill anything, you know, but not bed bugs, but what do you call them? Um, you know, if you've got any flaky stuff or anything, it, it will sort all of that out. Just boom. Um, and, and, you know, so part of me, is, I haven't done it, but part of me is going, I wonder what would happen if I just threw them in the dryer. Yeah, Jody's also saying every two weeks, except when it's summer and then once a week. Yeah. Interesting, though. Okay, you see my point. They don't really get dirty, do they? And, you know, and, and even if you're saying in the summer, because maybe you're more sweaty in the summer, um, if you think about it, uh, what if you just put them in the steam cycle? You know, in other words, put them in with something that's wet, like a face cloth or a, or a small hand towel or something, and then let the steam do its thing. I, I think I might consider doing that. Um, do you use rechargeable batteries? By, by habit, do you use them? Um, you probably can't see it, but round about there, I have a, um, a, um, a socket on top of my stove. And I am constantly recharging batteries. Now I have extras elsewhere, but you know, if ever I, you know, uh, open something up and, or I need to change a battery on a remote or something, I've always got two triple A's and two double A's ready to go, fully charged. And I want to tell you that makes quite a difference.
The other thing, I really recommend don't throw your batteries away. If, even if you don't have uh, rechargeable ones, don't throw them away. I leave mine for at least a season. And I'm amazed how many of them seem to get recharged to about three quarters full. I don't know why. But I, I invested on getting a battery checker that told me how much charge is in the batteries. And I probably get to save at least half my batteries. And the other half obviously go to recycling. So think about that. Um, Listen the landfill, you know, very important. Um, some of you know that I use my microwave as a notepad. I have a chalk pen. And whenever I want to remind myself of something, I will write it on there. <laughs> and... You know, windows are wonderful places to use as noteboards. <laughs> uh, your mirror, a wonderful place to use as a notepad, rather than paper. Especially if you've got a big, big project, really nice to sort of draw it out on your on your mirror, you know, on the side of your mirror there, and then you can just keep rubbing bits out as you do it. Think about that. If you buy Chinese takeout, do you wash and reuse the chopsticks? I hope so. For those of you who have coffee makers, do you use refillable pods? All right. All right, so all my pods are refillable. And two reasons for that. Number one is I can blend my coffees as I want to. So I can have my own blend of coffees. Um, but literally, I'm not filling up the landfill. All right. And they last a long time. I just literally two weeks ago bought some new ones. And I've probably been using my Keurig for five, ten years. Oh, probably ten. All right, and it's the first time I bought new ones, but I did buy some new ones. I would say that both Jody and I have had quite an epiphany about how much food we used to waste. And the, the reason for that is we both had reason to eat less food. <laughs> And, you know, it is amazing how much food I used to buy and waste. And that's why my organics uh, bin very rarely is full other than when I, you know, have leaves or a lot of weeds and things. Uh, so think about how to save everything by eating less. Jody um, got me into what is called inter intermittent fasting, which means that you don't eat when you get up in the morning. You only eat for, a, you know, sort of, a, a, sort of like about eight hours a day. Now, that probably sounds horrific, but it actually isn't. And the thing I noticed when I switched my taking my pill from the night to the morning is I have to take food with it. And that's really weird because I don't normally eat at all until about three o'clock in the afternoon. And I realized I, you know, because I need to take food with that pill. Um, and so now I have to be clever about what am I going to eat that's not going to trigger me to want to eat more and more and more. But it is amazing. Yeah. Jeannie's saying I'm cooking and then freezing more than I used to. Yeah. Very good idea. So you're not throwing as much away. I am trying to learn not to buy more than I need for this week. Oh, that's difficult. And the reason is my freezers are full. And I'm not using what's in them. So apparently I like to cook, but I don't like to eat. Now, it was very useful yesterday when I had a visitor. And I did a beautiful cotisserie board, but what I, you know, I pulled out ham and I pulled out turkey and I pulled out, you know what I mean? And I just laid it all out and it looked so pretty. And it was all stuff that we had done in the broadcast. So and that's a big thing for me now is to stop 
wasting money on food that I don't eat. As you know, I am busy growing my own all over the place, right? I've I've reduced my need for buying as much lettuce by growing my own micro um, greens. And I must admit that I'm already, after a month, going, boy, I much prefer the taste of the microgreens in my pita. You know, I have a pita every day, a small one, and I will put some cheese in it and normally lettuce or, or cucumber or whatever. I want to tell you, microgreens, way to go. And so I'm probably going to stop buying cucumber as much as I used to because I'm not using it at all. No, it's not, not, it's not that I'm using it at all. I'm just you're not, not, I would prefer to eat the microgreens. Now, I found out that my grocery store is going to stop delivering their groceries in bags starting next week. Interesting. So they will actually bring your gross, my groceries in a bin, and then they will need to empty that bin into bags or other boxes or whatever I might have available on my doorstep. You know, it's in other words, when I go there, they're not going to be leaving bags of food. They're going to be leaving produce. Now, that's a lot more work for me. I need the exercise, but it's a lot more work for me. But, you know, it's about imagine how many bags they will save. And, of course, because I think through things, I'm going, that's really going to slow down delivery, which means the delivery people are going to make less money. I was very sad about that. Very sad about that. Um, what... What other things have you noticed you have changed, right, in the last few years that are environmentally friendly? Because to me, the more I thought about it, the more I realized I've changed a lot. All right. I, I was actually quite surprised how much. Um, I definitely recycle all my clothes, and I, I wonder um, if you do. Um, this business, you remember I said I only turn my dishwasher on after midnight because it's cheaper. I'm waiting for them to come up with a technology that will turn my washing machine on on a delay function so that I can actually start my wash about four o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah, Jody's saying reusing foil is a good idea. Yep. I want to tell you this piece of foil has probably lasted me a year. <laughs> a good idea, right? And, you know, once you've done it once, you think, boy, how much foil did I waste in my lifetime? So not only does it save you money, but it actually saves the environment. Um, how many of you have cut down eating meat, red meat in particular, uh, knowing that the production of, of Red meat, be it cows and whatever, um, you know, uses up more energy and more food and creates more meth methane gas in our environment. Then, you know, it's it's our it's because we are, grew up eating so much. And what I found is, if you know, when I do the cooking every Friday, one of the things that I noticed is if you go to Asian dishes or if you go to Indian dishes or anything else. They do not use meat to fill up half a plate. They cook a plate of food and the meat is the decoration. You right? The meat is the decoration. When I pulled out ham yesterday to put on the board, I didn't pull out six slices. I just pulled up a couple of, you know, about three slices for the two of us and, and just cut it into slices to put... Yeah, uh, and then I, you know, I took a couple of slices of beef and cut it up. In other words, there just wasn't that much on there. There was meat, and there was plenty of it if you wanted it, but it wasn't the main thing. You know, I had fruits and I had vegetables and dip, and 
you know, all sorts of things. And I had cheeses, you know, but not a lot of meat. And we ate all the meat that I put out. So I was glad about that. But we also had a lot of other things, right? So don't use meat as your main ingredient. Use it as the topping. I keep my blinds closed now um, throughout the summer. And actually, I keep my blinds closed most of the year now. This house is incredibly, has is blessed with a lot of windows, which is wonderful because it's very light. But it also means that it lets all the cold in and lets all the heat in. So I have learned to keep the blinds down and it helps control my environment much better. Most of us run our fridges too cold. If you haven't checked the temperature of your fridge, you might want to. They're saying to keep it somewhere between 35 and 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, um, it's a good point, isn't it? What temperature is your fridge? I'm going to check mine. So when you're buying clothes, try not to buy fashionable clothes. Try to buy classic clothes. Clothes. When I say classic clothes, things that you will still be able to wear sort of, you know, um, 10 years from now. Now, the funny thing is, I actually did buy an orange sweater. And the first time I've had anything orange, I think, just about um, since the 70s. And how many of you know that all our clothes in the 70s were orange and brown and cream? It was amazing. <laughs> and that put me off orange for the longest time. But I decided, you know, it's time to revisit that. The other thing is, you know, in your um, furnishings, you know, if you buy furnishings, whenever I decorate a home, I, I try not to use um, fashionable colors in my furniture. I will have, if I want to, buy fashionable colors for for my pillows you know or my you know cushions yeah you can do that because you can easily change the cover um i change the color on my bed every season all right uh i, I change the pillow coverings that not the white ones the other ones all right um so that i have you know it's a new season new pillows and i put the other ones away until the next season what other things do you do that saves the environment. What have I forgotten? I like the fact you mentioned the foil. I'm trying to think what else. I reuse a lot of things. I use reuse a lot of packaging, um, containers and things. You know, I, I I'm looking over here. I've got seedlings growing in those little flats that food comes in. Um, I reuse milk bottles, as you know. At the back there, I've got things growing in milk bottles. Um, so reuse, recycle, right? Ah, Jody's saying my hack for the Swiffer is great. I want to tell you, I did that hack over 10 years ago. And, you know, I found out that you can wash a Swiffer duster. The thing is, don't put it in the dryer. So literally just wet it you know, well, put some soap on it, and just squidge it like this, okay, up and down this thing. Rinse it well, and then shake it, and then let it air dry. It's perfect. I've had, I have never bought more Swiffer dusters, and the ones that I demonstrated that on 10 years ago, I still got. Yes, Jeannie's saying, I reuse packaging. Sent something to Jody. And she noticed the back of the package was a picture of donuts. Yep. Uh, I do it a lot at Christmas time. You know, a lot of my Christmas presents are wrapped in boxes, but the boxes, you know, will be for mini wheats or, you know, whatever. Um, oh, I keep, I keep, yeah, I use a lot of boxes for, you know, but it hasn't got mini wheats in it. It's got nuts and, you know, what's it got in it? 
things to add to treats are in here, all right? But I've got, and that way I can fill it up vertically. Uses far, you know, you can get far more in a cupboard doing it that way. <laughs> yeah, Lee, Jody's saying, leave it to me to know it's a donut. Yeah, it's really important, really important to do that. I am busy trying to think how to better use Amazon boxes. I'm still working on that one. I have a feeling that there's going to be a whole thing about the amount of cardboard we're throwing away. Obviously, I could put it in my garden. You know, I could, you know, chop it up and put it in my garden. But, you know, there has to be, you know, I'm noticing that Amazon themselves are using less boxes. They've you know, got, they're changing their packaging where they can. So that that's a good thing. And if I ever get another box this size, there can something that's in it that's, you know, this size uh, drives me insane. So I'm hoping that revisiting for Earth Day is something that you're glad that we did and that we should continue to do every year is just go, okay, how far have we come? And quite honestly, I was surprised how far I've come, especially on things like LED lighting and motion detectors and um, stuff like that. I was really quite surprised. <laughs> and I went, hey, I'm doing quite well on those things. And yes, I am trying to grow my own food. To, you know, not, not huge. I'm not starting a farm, but I'm trying to do more and more. I'm trying to eat less, but more healthily. I'm definitely cut down on red meat. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You know, 10 years ago, if I had a steak, it would be this big. If I have, I had a steak this week, it was this big, literally this big, okay? And I cut it into slices and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, Jeannie's saying eating more fish is very healthy. Yeah, I'm not a big fish person and I love seafood, but seafood's pretty expensive. So, yeah. Um, so it's just a case of, you know, but it definitely is very, very healthy. Uh, because it has omega-3 oils in it. So, you know, but please <laughs> don't do the English fish and chips, you know, smothered in batter and, and, and greasy chips. No, that's not good. But what we're saying is plain fish. <laughs> or I was talking to somebody yesterday and her favorite recipe is caramelized salmon. And by the way, I hope I didn't throw it away. Please tell me I didn't throw it away. Oh my gosh. Anyway, she bought she bought goodies when she came. And she bought cake. And not just one slice, but two slices each. And then she also bought fudge. But it was the cutest fudge because it was Mother's Day fudge. And I nearly cried. And she said, because it always feels like coming home when I see you. And I haven't seen her in 10 years. So that was so cute. And I did ask her whether um, she would consider maybe coming on a broadcast one day. Because, boy, if there's a woman who's been through hell and back, it's her. And what she copes with on a daily basis just blows my mind. And I'm sure she'll be an inspiration for a lot of people. So she said she would definitely consider doing it. So that was really great. And we had a wonderful day, by the way. I'll talk more about it on Friday. But we had a wonderful time. It was just so magical. <laughs> you can probably hear the change in my voice when I try and talk about it. Okay. So um, Jeannie's saying she buys fish on sale. And notice shrimp is not as expensive as some fish. Ah, yeah, interesting. So consider eating shrimp. I love shrimp. I love shrimp. Shrimp cocktail, one of my faves. So, yeah, good. Thank you. I'll have a look at that. Oh, yeah, Jody, it was definitely a gift for me in so many ways, as you will hear. So, everybody, I hope that this was a good wake-up call. And anything that you're going to plan to do differently from listening to the broadcast, 
I'm thinking about that toothbrush thing. I, I definitely am going to stop running the... Um... Oh, the other thing, when I wash my hands, and when I wash my hands, I put the plug in the sink and then leave the water there to wash my hands again a second time. Does that make sense? I do do that. You know, if I need to wash, you know, it's just like, you, you know, you don't need clean, clean water. Each Again, another camping thing. Another camping thing. Amazing. I think everybody should learn to go camping. <laughs> you learn so much about conservation. This is Dear Mama Sal saying thank you so much for being with me. I've had a wonderful week in lots of ways. I definitely want to say that I feel a lot stronger this Sunday than I did last. And I intend to keep building my strength. Jody, I am so looking forward to hearing that you got to take a step. And that will be obviously uh, a part of your future now that you've got that foot to lift a little bit. But you keep working at it and keep doing what you know works because you've already done what works. Now you just got to build, if you like, the endurance of it, right? So that the, the, the highway is not just got a little bridge across it. The highway's got a solid path again. And I'm just, you know, I, I'm so delighted for you. It is wonderful. Jeannie, uh, thank you for being here as well, obviously. And thank you for all that you do to support us. And we really appreciate it. So for all of you, have a wonderful week. And we'll see you on Friday. This is Dear Mama Sal saying bye-bye for now. Thanks for your help, guys.